today I would like to discuss uh, cumulant uh, generating functions. So this is a device, a computational device, like, uh, uh, which is essentially a different form of uh, a generating function. So the idea is that, uh, uh, so we define a generating function of a probability distribution in this way. Uh, you have an integer random variable x, and then you take the expected value of s to the x. And uh, define this uh, as uh, the um, generating function. Now the idea is uh, instead of using this uh, variable s, uh, we are going to use uh, a variable, we are going to replace s by e to the z. Now, and uh, if s uh, is, we know that this uh, converges when s is in 0, 1. So uh, we know that uh, this, uh, um, the, uh, so the corresponding value of z will be uh, negative for real values. Okay? But z, uh, uh, as z, as s, uh, should be just considered as a counting device. It has no particular meaning. Okay, then uh, uh, you can uh, uh, define uh, the function uh, uh, C of Z, which is the logarithm of uh, this uh, uh, generating function here, computed when S is equal to E to the Z. So it's the logarithm of the expected value of uh, E to the Z times X. Okay, so why, uh, why is this uh, useful? Okay, well, uh, it is useful because uh, the, uh, well, of course, uh, you have different properties. So if you compute this uh, uh, function here, which is called the cumulative generating function at z equal to zero, you just get the expected value of 1, the logarithm of the expected value of 1, which is essentially 0. So if you take uh, the first derivative uh, and uh, uh, compute it in 0, then uh, uh, you see that you get 1 over the expected value of uh, e to the uh, zx uh, times the expected value of x e to the zx. When we compute it at uh, z equal to 0, we just get the expected value of uh, uh, x. But uh, uh, you can go on uh, and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, if you take uh, the second derivative now, let's do it here, the second derivative computed in 0, well, uh, is uh, uh, the first derivative uh, is another derivative uh, where you take the derivative here and it gives you uh, another factor x down here. So this, uh, when you compute it as z equal to 0, gives you the expected value of x squared. But then uh, you also have uh, uh, a term which is uh, comes from when you take the derivative with respect to this. And this gives you 1 over the expected value of e to the z, uh, zx squared uh, and another factor like this. So this is uh, exactly uh, the expected value of x squared. And uh, you recognize that this is uh, then uh, just uh, the variance. The variance of x. Okay, so uh, if you use a, a cumulative generating function, computing the variance is uh, much uh, is much simpler. It's just a second um, uh, second derivative. Okay, so what about uh, higher order uh, uh, derivatives? Well, uh, you can define uh, a, a general power expansion for uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, function here, 
and uh, this will be some from n equal to so you just have to expand uh, the exponent uh, here, the exponential here, and then expand the log. And uh, so we can write this power expansion in this form. And uh, this coefficient uh, Cn uh, is called the nth order uh, cumulant. Okay? And this is why uh, this function here is called a cumulant, uh, a cumulant generating function. Because if, uh, if it uh, if you expand it in power of z, then you look at the coefficient, you read the, the uh, cumulants. And of course, uh, uh, but for what uh, I told you up to now, the first cumulant, well, the zero order cumulant uh, is just going to be equal to zero. The uh, first order cumulant is just the expected value of x. And uh, the second, uh, the second uh, order cumulant just the variance of x. And uh, you can uh, uh, compute uh, the other uh, uh, cumulants by uh, just inspecting this, this, file, this, uh, this expansion here. Uh, actually, uh, there is an um, interesting uh, uh, formula for the, how to relate the coolants to the moments. And it has to do with uh, the fact that if you take uh, uh, the, this function here mm -hmm. and you expand it in power of z, so then this is uh, some n from 0 to infinity of the expected value of x to the n divided by n factorial e uh, th times uh, z to the n. This is just what you get by, expand, by, by taking the expansion of the exponential. And, uh, but then uh, you can also write this uh, as uh, e to the uh, psi of z and expand this exponential. So this gives some L uh, from 0 to infinity, C of Z to the power L divided by L factor. And now each of these L factors, C of Z, you can uh, expand it uh, by using this formula. And uh, this gives you some L from 0 to infinity, 1 over L factorial. And then uh, for each of these uh, uh, n uh, factor of psi, you will have a sum from uh, n1 from 0 to infinity, n l from 0 to infinity, and then uh, 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 a product of c n1 times uh, c n2 set up to c n l divided by n1 factorial n2 factorial n l factorial and then uh, you will have uh, uh, z to the n1 plus n2 plus n l okay now here you have uh, on one side a power expansion in z, uh, and here is a power expansion in z. Uh, so if you look at the coefficients uh, of, uh, so the coefficients of this power expansion must be the same. So if you look at the nth order coefficient uh, of the coefficient of z to the n here, then uh, you should uh, uh, sum over all these terms here that uh, for which the sum of n1 and 2 up to n l is equal to n. Okay? And this gives you uh, a formula for the expected value that correlates the moment, the nth moment 
a random variable or an integer random variable to uh, the cumulants and uh, then uh, you have uh, the a multinomial coefficient that comes from this n factorial and this object here and then the product of uh, the cumulants and then uh, you should uh, uh, introduce a delta function that tells you that you are only taking terms uh, where this sum uh, is equal to n so where uh, n1 plus nm is equal to n uh, this is the chronic of delta okay so the, now if you look at this formula uh, this is uh, uh, interesting formula because it uh, um, looks like complicated uh, but here essentially you have uh, 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 a simple interpretation in terms of balls and boxes so imagine that uh, uh, so this is uh, the number of ways uh, in which you can distribute uh, uh, n balls uh, into l boxes uh, such that there are n i uh, balls uh, in box i so the coefficient uh, so uh, so the coefficient uh, so if you consider this uh, ci the cumulant uh, ci as being uh, um, uh, uh, as corresponding to a box filled with i balls uh, sorry, this is C of n i, of filled with n i balls. Uh, then uh, uh, this coefficient is just a combinatorial coefficient of how you can get uh, uh, this. Uh, in how many ways you can uh, distribute these balls, and this just tells you that uh, uh, you should consider this box uh, not uh, ordered. Okay, so this. Uh, um, gives you uh, a way to uh, diagrammatically uh, represent uh, the expected value in terms of uh, sum of products of cumulants that you can invert and you can get uh, the uh, third order cumulant. Okay, so this is uh, explained in the lecture notes, so I will not uh, uh, discuss it further. Okay, other properties of uh, uh, the cumulant generating function is that uh, the cumulant generating function inherits all the properties that we have seen uh, for uh, the normal uh, generating function. Um, by the way, uh, because uh, uh, the expansion of this uh, object here uh, the coefficients are the moments, uh, so this object uh, is called the moment generating function. Also. Okay, so um, uh, if you have uh, uh, two random variables x1 and x2 which are independent, uh, and uh, you have cumulant generating function x1 offset. Uh, and uh, psi of x2 of z then uh, uh, the cumulant generated function of the sum x1 plus x2 is just the logarithm of the expected value of uh, into the z times x1 plus x2 but because x1 and x2 are independent, uh, then you can factorize uh, this expected value and the logarithm of the product is just the sum. So in the end, uh, you find that uh, uh, this is uh, just the sum of the two uh, cumulant generating functions. So the cumulant generating function uh, uh, under the sum uh, behave as the random variable themselves. So the cumulant generating function of the sum is the sum of the uh, cumulant generating functions. 
uh, and this extends uh, if you have uh, uh, a sequence uh, of uh, n uh, independent and identically distributed uh, uh, random variable with uh, a full engineering function cx of z then uh, you can compute uh, you can think of the sum of uh, these uh, uh, random variables and uh, because of uh, the same uh, argument uh, the uh, generating function of the sum of n independent uh, uh, and identically distributed random variables is just the log of the expected value of the e to the z times the sum this uh, expected value factorizes the logarithm of the product is just uh, uh, the sum of the logarithms but then each term is equal so uh, this is just uh, n times the cumulative generated function of uh, uh, c to the z okay cx of z okay so uh, and this also extends uh, to uh, cases uh, where uh, we have a sum of a random number of uh, random variables. Okay, so uh, just a recap. So uh, imagine that uh, you have a, a sequence uh, of uh, an infinite sequence of independent and identically distributed uh, random variables. Uh, with uh, a generating function uh, uh, f of s this is the expected value of s to the xi and then uh, you have a, a random variable t which is an integer, also an integer random variable and uh, uh, which is independent of the other random variables and uh, it is uh, a generating function uh, G of S of S to the T. Then uh, uh, what we have seen uh, uh, is that uh, if you consider the random variable sigma T, which is the sum of the first uh, T random variables, where T is itself now a random variable then uh, you can define a generating function for this random variable which is uh, uh, um, expected value of s to the sum and what we have seen is that uh, this is just given by g computed in f of s okay now uh, let us see what happens uh, if we use uh, uh, the uh, uh, formalism of uh, uh, cumulative uh, cumulant uh, generating function. So let's say that uh, eta of z is a cumulative uh, a cumulant generating function of uh, uh, of uh, the random variable uh, uh, sigma okay then uh, uh, well uh, uh, you can argue that uh, this should be the logarithm of uh, g computed uh, in uh, uh, f of s but let's say let me define f of s as e to the phi of z where phi of c is the cumulative, uh, cumulant generating function of uh, random variables xi. So this is uh, the log of g of e to the phi of z. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and if I define gamma of z as the cumulant generating function of uh, uh, the random variable t then you 
see that uh, this uh, is nothing but uh, uh, essentially uh, the logarithm. Uh, this is exactly equal to the uh, cumulant generated function of uh, computed in a field set. Okay, so the uh, cumulant generating function satisfies the same type of equation as the generating function for uh, sums of a random number of integer random variables. And, uh, but this equation is uh, because uh, the derivatives uh, are directly the cumulant, so this equation is much uh, uh, easier if you want to compute, uh, uh, for example, the variance of uh, sigma. So let us do it. So the variance of uh, uh, sigma t now uh, it's just the second derivative uh, of uh, z uh, computed in z equal to zero. And this is uh, uh, you have two terms. Uh, so one term uh, is uh, uh, gamma prime computed in phi of z uh, times uh, the second derivative of, of phi of z plus uh, gamma double prime phi of z times uh, twice the first derivative. Okay, and this should be computed in z equal to zero. Now you really see, see immediately that this is the expected value of t. This is the variance uh, of x. This is uh, the variance of t. And this is, uh, sorry, this is squared. And this is uh, the expected value of x uh, squared. So uh, you see that computing uh, uh, the, the variance, uh, uh, it's really straightforward with cumulant generating function. It requires a little bit more uh, effort uh, if, you, you, if you take derivatives uh, at s equal to 1 of this function uh, using uh, this, uh, this relation. Okay, so there are also other properties that make uh, the use of cumulant generating functions uh, 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 very practical. So, for example, uh, uh, something that you will find in the notes uh, is that uh, um, so we saw that uh, um, if, uh, uh, if you have a, a sequence of uh, independent random variables and you look at what is the um, generating function of the, the of uh, of the sum, then uh, you find that uh, the generating function of the sum of n times uh, is uh, the generating function of uh, one of the random variables to the n. Okay, so this this tells you that uh, uh, if you have uh, a like a, a generating function. Uh, uh, which is the generating function of the sum, then this will be equal to uh, the nth power of a generating function. Now you can also ask uh, uh, the opposite question. So imagine that you have a random variable x, which has, uh, um, uh, oh, let me call it, uh, uh, say, z. Uh, we call it y. And imagine that uh, this has a, a generating function, uh, um, uh, let's call it uh, uh, a few of us. Okay. So um, can we consider this random variable um, as the sum of n independent random variables? C can we consider this? Uh, random variable y as the sum of n random variables. 
Well, if you bear this result, uh, this will tell you that uh, uh, the condition for this to be uh, true is that uh, if this is the generating function of y, the generating function of x should be uh, q of s to the 1 over n. Okay? So essentially, uh, if, you have a if you have a random variable which has a generating function such that uh, the, its 1 over n power is a generating function, this means that the power expansion of, of this in powers of s has all positive coefficients and that they sum up to 1. Then uh, you can consider this random variable as being the sum of n other random variables whose generating factors of it, this is uh, s to the x, uh, whose generating function is the 1 over n power of uh, the, the this generating function, uh, of this um, generating function here. And if you can do this for every value of n, then it means uh, that you can divide uh, this random variable as many times as you want in an arbitrary way. And these are called uh, infinitely divisible distributions. Okay? So now, um, uh, one type of, so that is a simple, uh, uh, it is simple to see that uh, if you take uh, a random variable that is uh, the uh, sum of a random number of random terms, if this and, and this t is a Poisson random variable, then uh, uh, the generating function of this uh, uh, random variable, which is called a compound Poisson process, is uh, uh, the generating function of Poisson process, which is e to the minus lambda times 1 minus s, computed in uh, f of s. So it's this one. Okay? So, and it is clear that uh, uh, if you have a, a random variable with this generating function, then it's 1 over n power, so h of s, the 1 over n, is just, uh, uh, it's also a generating function because it's e to the minus lambda divided by n, 1 minus f of s. So, compound uh, Poisson distributions. Uh, are infinitely divisible because uh, for any value of n, uh, well, this is uh, still uh, a, a random variable that, that is a sum of a random number of uh, random variables. And uh, there is a, a theorem that tells you uh, that uh, um, not only is compound Poisson uh, uh, distributions are infinitely divisible, but all infinitely divisible distributions are compound Poisson uh, have this form here. Okay, and uh, you find a proof of this uh, in the book of Feather, but I provide a different pr proof uh, uh, using. Uh, uh, cumulant uh, generating functions in the lecture notes, which, which I, I think is it's, it's, uh, maybe more uh, uh, intuitive. Okay. <laughs>